I want to welcome everybody back to the Sunday afternoon. It's great to be here, especially with all the hackathon attendees, um, but also, of course, all the speakers and guests of FOSS Asia and our judges here in the first row. Um, let's take you through this afternoon. Um, running slightly behind, but uh, shh, shh, please, let's, let's get started. The teams, um, don't worry, we'll guide you through the process. So uh, we've got a few assistants here, Mr. Guy and Mayana, and so uh, we'll set you up before you come on stage. Um, our proud sponsor for uh, this hackathon event is UNESCO, and so we're very glad to have them here again, and also part of the judges, whom I'll introduce in a minute. Um, this is the second year that we're running this uh, UNESCO-sponsored event. Um, please take your seats and uh, kindly also move in for others that are still coming into the room. So this is uh, taking, taking place here at the Lifelong Learning Institute again. And uh, to give you some brief background to what's been going on these last few days. We kicked off the hackathon on the 15th of March and we ran this for really two days with a focus on building awesome apps, games, and assistance to improve people's lives. And the focus has yeah. been to use FOSS Asia technology in the year of indigenous languages. So not an easy uh, challenge, but certainly a very relevant topic, especially for Asia with its many different languages and different cultures. Can I ask you to be quiet, please? So uh, we've had 194 registered participants uh, the event, the hackathon itself ran over two days and we had 15 final submissions. So can I just ask for a round of applause for all the submissions? <laughs> okay. Right, to take you through this, um, I'll just introduce uh, the judges, take you through the presentations, which we will have to keep tight, so I need you to be mindful of time. The judges will withdraw for a consultation to evaluate the projects and we'll have an award ceremony, and we'll have some prizes, and then a closing of the summit. Um, Mario, if I can just ask you on stage <laughs> to briefly, uh, Nayana, you have a microphone, uh, to briefly introduce the judges, uh, seeing as you're, you've been very much part of this, this process. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so we have a very wide variety of judges who are really distinguished uh, um, from some companies who we welcomed here, but also from the UNESCO and from the hacker community. So it's uh, really awesome. I would like uh, to introduce the judges here. So uh, the first judge that is here on the left is Mitch Altman. He's a maker and our open hardware hero. So a Yay. big round of applause, please. <laughs> the second judge uh, we see here, uh, they're sorted by, I don't know, I think randomly, right? <laughs> so uh, so uh, we see here Davide Storti from the UNESCO. Davide is a supporter for many years of the FOSS Asia Summit. The first one uh, you uh, joined in uh, 2010. Uh, I found uh, pictures and uh, you looked exactly the same. So <laughs> we're very glad to have you here with energy always supporting uh, the FOSS Asia Summit. So thank you for joining us as a judge, Davide Storti. Then uh, the next uh, judge we have also here um, was introduced by Davide a few years later and uh, um, is from the UNESCO Bangkok office, uh, Misako Ito. <laughs> Misako is also a long-term judge for hackathons, uh, kind of a hackathon senior now, uh, doing a lot of hackathons in Vietnam and uh, here also last year at the Force Asia Summit. So, and the next judge that we have um, is uh, uh, the Vice President and CTO of Cloud and Cognitive Software at IBM. This year, uh, cloud is a big topic also, and um, we hope to see a lot of applications that deploy in the cloud, uh, connect to the cloud, so we're very looking forward. Um, the judge is Shankar V. Selva Durai. And then we have uh, the founder of FOSS Asia. Um, I don't know, I hope uh, you all took the opportunity to take a photo with uh, um, uh, Hong Fook because she chose every day a nice, uh, beautiful, uh, uh, traditional dress from Vietnam. And uh, yeah, if yes. you didn't take a photo yet, please yeah. come. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 
Hongfuk Dam. And uh, then the next one is Matura Bikash Trip uh, Tripura. Um, I'm sorry, I always have like difficulties, yeah, but you're helping us, and this is also the topic of the indigenous uh, um, languages here that we have, that we can also learn from indigenous communities, indigenous languages, and so on. So you're a language expert, and having this from this angle, Matura Bikash Tripura. <laughs> this organization is Zabarang. And uh, the next also, uh, Vinod Kumar is the APIC technical lead for Microsoft, um, here uh, responsible for partner teams. And um, yeah, Vinod, you also have a background uh, like from India, but also from Singapore. You're, so you bring also the different cultures and the world together. So this is perfect for this uh, hackathon with uh, having the different backgrounds. So thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> yeah. I'm also glad to be always part of this. I think uh, no need words needed. Many of us have talked directly, so uh, it, it's me, but actually I should be last. Uh, uh, Michael Christen is in front of us. Uh, he is the um, founder of Suzy AI, uh, which many also used uh, in the hackathon. We had uh, different workshops here. We have a lot of developers here uh, from Suzy AI, so it's great to have the expertise, uh, combined expertise here of the community with Michael um, on the board. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, getting into the heart of the matter, the most challenging part is the judging criteria, and just for complete transparency, of course. Um, the judges are evaluating technical implementation, uh, the open data and open knowledge, and the application thereof, usability and UX, which is very important, scalability and replicatability. We have inclusiveness, and then, of course, the focus on indigenous languages, and last, there'll be an element of judging on the use of FOSS Asia technologies. So that really brings together the value of this FOSS Asia conference. Um, this is the lineup. So we've got 15 teams, which is fantastic. It's going to be a fairly intense afternoon. So I need the teams to be ready and prepared, but also keep to their time. And they get four minutes, four minutes to present. And the teams should also make sure they balance between the presentation, but also their demonstration. If they have something to demonstrate, the judges want to see that. They want to evaluate how much you've been able to deliver, if that's been possible within your team. And one minute for Q&A, and we'll be very strict on this, but we hope the judges have some good questions lined up for these teams. So teams, just make note, and we'll coordinate this. And after this, at the end, we'll have an audience vote. So at the end of this, we'll show this link again, and you'll be able to access this URL and submit a vote, and that vote will go towards a prize at the end. And so um, we'll get to the prizes later, but there's going to be five prizes, of which one is this audience vote prize. Um, so make sure during that we, we access this link again. So make a note of this link now if you want, um, but we'll, we'll assign the prizes later on. Mr. Gee, I think now we start off with the first team. OK, that's what the website looks like. So please access this website. You'll find the button to vote there, vote on submission. And that will allow you to vote as the session continues and at the end of the, 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 the evaluation of all the projects. Um, we'll then take a tally of these votes after the judges uh, withdraw from the room. And so we'll award these five prizes at the end of this uh, FOSS Asia Summit and the closing. OK, first team. Are you ready? LIL, is it? Audience, you'll have to bear with us. You're going to have quite a number of teams changing. And with all the laptops and all the configurations, we're bound to have some of these uh, setup challenges. OK, over to LIL. Let's start the timer. Good, every uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Arani from Thailand. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Yoshita, and I'm from India. I'm Sahitya from India. I'm Neelima from India. And I'm Saiton from India. And we are from uh, IL, ILL teams. Uh, as you know, a uh, few days ago, that uh, indigenous languages are danger, no? And uh, some of them are very danger, <laughs> and uh, some is still danger. So uh, we are more focused on um, youth, more focused on youngster, and who are uh, good on technology and also uh, good. Uh, yeah, good on technology. And then what is the concept is uh, we would like 
uh, we still raise awareness uh, to to help the children or the, the youngsters to come back to their own language. But however, we don't have, uh, uh, we, we are not ready to prepare anything yet. But however, so we create this app to help the, the, the youngster if they are come back, so we are ready. Yeah. Um, this application basically consists of three levels uh, for the youngsters, for the millennials to um, easily understand and approach it. The first level is basic level, which uh, consists of basic greetings of how to understand the language, to how to approach people from different languages. Um, it basic, it only uh, basic greetings, r written scripts, also um, for voice. Um, and the second level. Uh, basically, our sec second level con consists of community. Here we connect the people who know the language to the people who are uh, learning the language. It is ba basically a type of a chat. You can see when I post, I don't know the language. When I post hello, the, the people who know the language, uh, for example, we took the Karen here. Uh, they are they'll message the same thing in Korean language. So in this way, the people with basics can learn medium uh, level of language. So once uh, the person is done with the two levels and when he attains good knowledge about the language, he can come into the third level, which is the advanced level, wherein here the research work, the book uh, reading and all, when he wants to explore more about the language, he can read books and all. We have database containing all the book details and all so that they can just look into it and connect with the scholars. We can connect them with the scholars so that they can learn more about the language. And as millennials are uh, most used to smartphone now, we are also planning to have an uh, Android app uh, application, Android application uh, along with the web-based web application. And uh, we also plan to have games because uh, which, uh, that, uh, which that helps users understand uh, more, more about the Korean culture in a wider context. Uh, many people say that if uh, technology is grow up, it means that uh, it can uh, lose, uh, we can lose our culture, it's, e it's easy. And it's, I, for us, we think that probably yes and no. If yes, it means that we are not ready for that. But uh, for us, we think that we, say we can say no because uh, we, we, we can develop uh, those things and we are ready for, for, for the change. Uh, as you can see, these are our three levels, but we are planning for the future implementation. That is, we are planning to connect Suzy AI so that when I message the uh, language, it should read the language because many people doesn't know the script. For the understandability, the Suzy AI uh, will design in such a way that it can read the language and uh, it can. Uh, pronounce it properly so that people who are learning it can learn properly. Time's up. Okay, good team. Let's see if we've got some questions. Run of applause. <laughs> Any questions from the judges? You've got one minute for that. Yeah, th uh, so th thank you very much. Uh, um, so uh, you, you said you haven't been able to uh, do uh, functioning thing, but uh, I, I see uh, on the submission there is uh, actually quite uh, a lot of code. So uh, can you can you explain more or less what, uh, what we'll be able to do or how this is functioning? Yeah, we will be able to do it. Just including the, so just to finish the question, including the skills uh, AI, uh, on uh, SUSE AI, so that this is also mentioned. This, the, uh, there is a mention, I think, on the s skills uh, for uh, Suzy, or if I'm not mistaken? No. Ah. We are adding the Suzy AI voice for uh, pronouncing the message. Mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, David, there is uh, all code in the repository, so... No, it's just a basic code. We just did wrote some code, but then we could finish it. If given some time, we'll definitely finish the project. Okay, thank you, team. Yeah. Um, so let's bring up the next team. Okay, the next team will be CloudSource Corpus Generation. And uh, can the next team, Karana Rescue Translator, please uh, form up in front? Okay. 
Are you, are you here? You want to connect? Uh, USB C. Okay, so for those um, who perhaps popped into the 2 2 theater here on the second floor, uh, we had all these teams sitting there in different groups programming away for the last few days. Uh, so that's been quite a challenge. I mean, these volunteers take it upon themselves to participate in this hackathon and deliver something functional and, and uh, prove a product in a short amount of time. This team is Crowdsourced Corpus. Okay, over to Crowdsourced Corpus. Um, so before he gets started with the slides, let me just introduce ourselves. I'm Akash, I'm from IIT Varanasi, and uh, this is my team. I'm Amit Saktani, a proud open source contributor. I'm Rajvev Dubey, an uh, open source contributor from Uttar Pradesh, India. I'm Shubham Gupta, and I contribute to SUSI project. I'm Sonia, an open source contributor in Mozilla Firefox. All right, so uh, we did not get much time to prepare a fancy slide, so I'll just, you know, you can focus on me. So uh, what we have built is called a crowdsourced uh, corpus generator. And people, those who don't know what a corpus, corpus is, a corpus is basically a list of millions of sentences. And maybe they're translations or maybe they're POS tagging. So it can be anything, depending on what you want to uh, use it for. All right. So uh, why do we call it crowdsourced? So obviously, we are trying to get the translations from the crowd. But the problem is that uh, a crowd cannot be trusted. right? So what our system is trying to solve is uh, giving a metric whether a translation can be trusted or not. And of course, uh, we have further improved on the features. So I'll uh, get down to that. So our, yeah, it seems like we have some technical issues. Sure. Yeah. So. Uh, our whole app, I mean, the platform itself consists of two major parts. So one is the translation itself. So there's a platform which will collect the translations. And there's another side to the platform which will be used to give uh, CSV data or maybe like any researcher who wishes to work with NLP applications or maybe machine translation. So the platform uh, provides an easy to use uh, corpus generator. Yeah. So uh, the problem we are trying to solve is basically crowdsourcing it. And is this actually needed? Because you see, uh, in case of indigenous languages, there are not many translators who are working. And uh, the people who know the language are either few in number, or they are not accessible most of the times. So this platform is basically taking it to a remote level, so that people who are kind of bil bilingual, like uh, knowing somewhat both the languages, they can make use of this uh, application to help the community. But again, uh, like I said, crowd cannot be co uh, trusted. So a person who is somewhat sure about the answer and a person who is absolutely sure about the answer. So uh, this is where our, the, I mean, the algorithm that we have thought of uh, kicks in. So, uh, so let me rephrase uh, what we have actually built. This is not a data collector. It's actually an intelligent data collector, right? So, uh, so let me show the math that we have used here. So this is basically a vector representation. This is just uh, a simple vector representation. This is uh, a plane in which we have vectors. So what we have done is uh, we have, uh, say for a sentence, we have 10 translations who are, uh, that have been given by 10 different users. So each translation is converted to a word vector and is represented on a vector space. So sorry. Yeah. So. Uh, Using that vector representation, we generate a mean vector. And the vector which is closest to the mean vector is selected as our best possible translation. But then again, uh, a standard deviation of the whole distribution is calculated. And if the deviation is a bit on the lower side, then we are, uh, I mean, we can say that we are confident about the mean vector that we have generated. But then again, if the, the uh, standard deviation is on the higher end, we would say that we are not confident about that answer. Right? So this is the main gist of our application. And this is how uh, it actually works. So this is the dashboard that we have built. Uh, so the translation part that I talked about, so that is integrated, and that can be integrated into many different platforms where you all you need to do is basically take input from users. Yeah? 
And uh, this is the dashboard that a researcher might see. Uh, for now, we have just tested, in on a, uh, tested it on a few number of samples. But as you can see, uh, those are the English sentences and uh, the indigenous counterparts. I'm sorry, the labels have been inverted, it, it seems. And the score that we have generated is being generated by the algorithm. OK. Excuse me. Your time's up. I so guess I have can conveyed most of the algorithm itself. So if you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, so uh, there's that easy to use button which you will click and the CSV is downloaded. Questions? So, um, yes, uh, I, I didn't get what technology are you using. Is it, do you have a backend also or where does the data yes, come yes, from? Yes, yes, yes. We have a backend which will be used to communicate to any other platform which is trying to integrate our solution to this. So let's say we have Suzy, and a Suzy, uh, I mean, a Suzy user just wants to pitch in to this translation task. So he just gives in uh, like a keyword, and uh, we send him one particular sentence, which he'll have to translate. And this data is sent back to our backend. And the algorithm tries to figure out, I mean, tries to give that particular sentence, the, that particular translation, a score, and which will be uh, displayed here, as you can see. So. Um, interested if, um, like, let's say, this sounds already pretty complicated. I mean, like, the idea is clear, but uh, maybe it's, yeah, the implementation is always like, right, like, a lot of details to it. But could this be also used, for example, for um, roles? Like, let's say we have, uh, uh, like, a role which is based on trustability. So a, a person can have more, um, more rights um, if they reach a certain role, for example, have a uh, number of edits, have uh, verified an account, things like that, um, and also are, uh, are voted trustworthy by a, uh, by a lot of other trustworthy people. Yeah, I understand yeah. your question. So that can be a possibility. So if a person is a valid translator, he is a qualified translator, maybe his contribution could be given a more weightage as compared to the other translators. Yeah. So I, like for, for me, I don't know German. And if I try to translate a German sentence, maybe my translation would be given a less weightage as compared to you, right? So that can be a possibility. We haven't done that here, but yes, it's an extension which can be easily integrated into this. We are not using any data set. We are trying to generate a data set. This is crowdsourcing the uh, generation itself. So we can uh, either take, um, yeah, yeah, so crowdsourcing the data generation, that is our aim, All right? So there are already available, I mean, uh, openly available uh, corpuses. So we can just strip away the uh, English part, and we can use that English part as the set from which the user will be given the sentence, and then the user gives in uh, uh, indigenous translation. Right. OK, round of applause for this team. Thank you. OK. Uh, so to team crowdsource corpus, uh, I think uh, a good recovery um, <laughs> from uh, your technical hiccups. But teams, please be aware that you need to be prepped and ready to plug in and have your slides come up. Um, so we don't have too much time uh, to, to lose. Right, so uh, judges, I think that was a um, com comprehensive presentation on a fairly technical subject matter, but also a good application of, of SUSI. Um, Next, we have Kerala Rescue Translators. No. Kerala Corona Rescue. Are they, are they here? Okay, if not, we will have to skip. A popular online indigenous crafts. Okay. Popular online indigenous crafts. Okay, team, you're going to get four minutes and then one minute for Q&A. And we're going to have the timer on the left-hand side here. The next team will be Twig Genius. Are you here? Twig Genius. Uh, hello, good afternoon. My name is uh, Panom Tano. I belong to Korean Indigenous Group. I used to work with, um, work with Indigenous Media Network in Thailand. So, so hello, my name is Ishan. She's Nigarika. And he's Harshit. We are from India. And yes, so uh, I'll just briefly introduce you about our idea and concept. Our making this app. So the idea is uh, we make an application for indigenous people and non-indigenous people to access to this kind of platform. 
In this app, we allow indigenous people around the globe to publish their own uh, their community story and sell their their own products from from their own communities. And we allow the youth, our indigenous youth, in who living or studying in the city, uh, to access to this kind of app and bring a product from their parents uh, to post and for for selling on on this kind of app. So. This app, if, if this app built, uh, it will be help. It will help indigenous people to revive just not only their language, but their culture, their traditional knowledge in making this kind of product and relating to natural resource management and ecosystem as well. So my friend will demonstrate it. So it's, uh, this is actually not uh, a shop shopping site, but it's going to help the charity and NGOs that are being uh, that are available in the indigenous uh, communities to grow like if he, if he's a customer he's going to come and search for the communities he are look, he's look, uh, looking to contribute at so once he likes some of the communities like suppose there are some c cancer based NGOs some NGOs are working for the women and uh, much more communities are there so once he select any of the communities he will be able to contribute and uh, he will be able to purchase any of the products so apart from this we have we also have got a premium premium membership that what it does is you need to pay like only five dollars per month if you pay that money you will become a pre premium member and you will be allowed to attend each and every event that is going to take place in the native places of that community or NGO uh, also, apart from this, m you will get the products for free monthly, like that are being made by any members or the students of that community. So the basic idea behind this was that uh, suppose a, peop a person is from Malaysia and uh, I'm from India, so we meet. There's no chance that uh, we will be able to recognize each other or we will be able to talk to each other. but when we come in contact with some products like if we buy some products we like some products we tell our friends that these these products we get from this place and they they all built it so this is going to help the community so this is the video of the app so these are the communities if you select the if you first log in So these are the communities. So you will get the information regarding the communities. And once you select in your favorite, they will be available in your checklist. And you will be able to buy the products then. Yes, this is, uh, so Harshit has a prototype. So if any of the judges wants to see, you can check it. Yeah, so. Thank you. You guys are good on time. Well done, team. Very smooth. Let's have the judges ask. Do you use any uh, data, open data, open knowledge? Yes, uh, all of data are open data that are provided by indigenous people themselves. How? I mean, uh, how do you get to the data? How do you get how yeah. we get the data, right? Because uh, we work with our uh, indigenous network. For example, I work with AIPP, Indigenous People Pack Foundation, that work with, work with indigenous people in 14 countries uh, in Asia, and also work with um, from 48 organizations, things like that. And we have a group we call it Mekong uh, Regions Caucus, working with indigenous people in five countries. So we can uh, use. Uh, maximize this kind of network alliance that X we have to introduce the app and bring information to them. Mm -hmm. so Further questions from the judges? Time for one more. Just on the uh, security side of it, um, how are you storing data? How, how are you enabling that? Because you seem to have some. It's just a prototype. Currently, we hard code the data into database, SQLite database, and we retrieve from there. Okay, so how how's how are you thinking about security and, and, and storing of all of all of it so later we can use firebase because currently we have limited time so i just hard coded okay
So anyone of you wants to see the prototype? If you have a okay, you have shown your prototype earlier. Okay, because we are tight for time. I think team, you're up. So thank you very much. Okay, so uh, our popular online indigenous crafts oh, sorry, team was, um, was certainly aware of the complexities of indigenous languages and also the, uh, the number of challenges of sourcing the data. I think that's the biggest hurdle in any machine learning is getting access to the data in order to train the models. So uh, going down to grassroots level is, is definitely one way of doing that. Um, this team that we is Tweet Generous, right? Okay, so next team up is Tweet Generous. Here's your microphone. Can we? So our team is Tweet Generous. Tweet Generous is basically a to Twitter tool for indigenous people. Um, currently, like the government does not have any system in case of disasters to like um, take data from to give data or take data from twi Twitter to provide help to the indigenous people. So we have developed a Python script which will get data from Twitter and like using the hashtags. We will use the hashtag as the input. Once you put a hashtag, in, you can choose a language in which you want the hashtag. Once the hashtag has been giv uh, give it, given, our script will return the twi tweets with the hashtags and other tweets which have similar hashtags. With this, the government can find out where the um, natural calamit calamity is like worse and send help immediately. This is for helping the rural people as well. Like they can check which um, um, if any natural disaster is headed their way, I can move to safe shelters. And this is basically what Tweetenis does. We have also started localization of a few apps of Ossetia. Like the PS Labs Android app is a really great app. It is uh, very good for students to learn science, but the app is currently only in English. So like it cannot be used by everyone. We have localized the PS Labs app in Nepali language so that people who speak Nepali and are not really well versed with English can also use the app. Um, I shall show the screenshots of the app and our site as soon as the technical issues is resolved. Uh, please bear with us. So, uh, uh, I would like to discuss the web app. Uh, in the web app, we are taking two inputs. Uh, first would be the hashtag of the specific event that he wants to, uh, that the government or any NGO wants to search. The next input will be the language that he wants to search. Any indigenous language can be added, but at the moment we are using Nepali as an indigenous language. When we, uh, when the user will submit, uh, click the submit button, we are using the idea of Milix generator, that is another Asia app, to trigger a Travis, Travis build, and the Travis build will run a Python script and will give us the data that will be shown in graphical form. Uh, that will be discussed by my colleague Rahul. Yeah, this will, this, hello. Yeah, this will be the front end part. Here we will pass the query like I have already taken. Uh, this is based on the Nepal earthquake. So uh, here I will be using uh, Nepali language. So it will face the data. We have already collected from the Twitter. So this will face. And how it works? Uh, first of all, we have used Loclac to collect all the tweets. And we used some Python scripts to extract the hashtags from the tweets. And we processed all the tweets to reduce the noise so, so that the uh, precision of the system can be uh, improved. So. You can follow the implementation like we have used the library and we have imported the file which we collected from the Twitter. And after pre-processing, this uh, step are all involved the pre-processing part. And after that, I have ex extracted, we have extracted the hashtag uh, using some regular expressions. And we have plotted the hashtags. Here you can see some hashtags like home. Uh, government can use this data to provide the relief very effectively. Like uh, this, can, uh, in the tweets, the hashtag home is used frequently. That means uh, there may be chances that people uh, have lost their homes. So government can use to build some more refugee shelters so that uh, they can provide some pre pre uh, pre data can be obtained. And here you can see some uh, reverse names. That means 
in in those situations these rivers have badly affected so government can use this data to uh, extract or remove those people from those areas this can be pre previously can be done before the uh, before the high high casualties and here you can see some states some districts names are also visible like setopati and hamrakura so government can use this is data like use these states to provide the priority so that government can provide provide the service uh, first to these cities then to other respective cities right your time's up team okay just a round of applause i think this is particularly challenging when you're under pressure and stressed to get this up and running um over to the judges uh, this is already on stored data that you are doing it, or is it on? Yeah, this is the map? BS Labs app. We have created translations for the app, and it is fully functional. Um, it works. If you want, I can show you a live demonstration on my mobile. Is it on? It's on real-time data, or is it on um, stored? BS data? Labs is an existing app of Force Asia. We just like made translations so that data can be viewed in Nepali as well. Currently, it is only in English. Um, that if I want a demonstration. No, that's Thank you very much. Okay, team. Right. Unfortunately, a bit challenging to uh, present without slides, so uh, let's hope we can address these challenges. You yes, are good afternoon, everybody. Kay. Yes, my name is uh, Samin Ngaj, and I'm belong to Punong Indigenous and I'm from Cambodia and I'm working for Cambodia Indigenous Youth Association. I'm happy to be here today and uh, my team will uh, present uh, our uh, home of indigenous peoples and my uh, friend will do that. Yes. Good afternoon everybody. My name is Don. I'm from Laos and we both are indigenous from Mekong region. And our web developer are not here with us. So basically, we, we are working on the website on, by ourselves. So yes, uh, we will show the website. So the idea of uh, developing the website is to uh, preserve and promote uh, indigenous language through animation and also use our culture uh, by learning English through the culture, through sport, arts. Um, yeah. Can you? Oh, okay. Then you can talk about the vision. vision first. Okay, uh, this is our vision and mission that we create. Uh, the home of indigenous people and the reason we want to protect the cultures, um, social and uh, traditional knowledge or traditional system of indigenous people and collect and share the traditional knowledge about the indigenous groups because our website is not just only uh, focused on the uh, indigenous in the Mekong but also we can look for the who are working on the indigenous uh, issue. And also we empower indigenous people, especially we promote the rights of indigenous people to land without land, without right, and without culture too, okay? And just next slide. And uh, how we can do this uh, work? Because we have the specific plan. After this uh, uh, meeting, we will uh, form a working group, and then we, we, we need like a uh, developer who can help us to, to, to design all this kind of work. And also we will um, build a database. Like we have like a cultural history for uh, each group, like art, photography, record, yeah, something like this. Okay, next. Okay. Yeah, he is the, the way forward that uh, we, we will work, like training the young indigenous people in technologies and also teach how they promote their, uh, their cultures in the website and help indigenous people to communicate with the international community 
through the using a dictionary and a translation, a Google translation as well. Like this is kind of thing that we think it's important for us indigenous people to uh, to do kind of work. Yes. This is our website. Yeah, you can click it. Yes, okay. here is our website. I hope everybody Great. will enjoy. Can you show us the website briefly? You've got a bit of time left. Okay. So this is uh, the website that we developed it. Yeah. So if you go to the home and then you will see this, I this is the idea that we want to post. For example, this one, yeah, this one is um, Brunong indigenous from Cambodia and this from Kamu. Yeah. Mm -hmm like this and then when you click to each indigenous and then you see the language so you click on like let's learn Bunong language and the culture let's learn Bunong language and sport like something like that yeah. okay thank you very much okay round of applause <laughs> so the judges some questions to the website of cultural artifacts and and learning Any questions from the panel? Um, so, so sorry. Um, how do you, how are you going to uh, fit the in the, the site with the data? Uh, I didn't get it uh, properly. So, how do you man maintain the data? I mean. Um mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, how we can maintain it? So, first we will do research. And then we also will allow indigenous from uh, the region to contribute the information, especially on art, culture, those information that we still don't have much. And also their uh, art, especially uh, the drawing, painting related to the culture. Yeah. And then we will feed the information on this website. And basically only two of us right now as a team to maintain this website. So as you can see, we, can, we haven't done much because our skills are very limited and we don't have web developer to support us. Yeah. I would like to add, um, of course, like uh, we are not just only two, but we have more like indigenous network in the Asia region, like indigenous people back, we have a big network. So I think uh, to maintain this uh, website, we will uh, collect that all information to post in this. And we will launching this kind of work that we have uh, done here. This is the thing that uh, we, will, we, we will do next, and how to maintain this kind of work. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, team. Right. I guess maintaining a website like this, as UNESCO would know, is a big challenge. Getting all the data in and uh, managing a lot of web administrators to organize and sort all this content is, is a daunting task. Um, but very good presentation, team. Okay, next team up, just getting set up. This is the uh, Guageland, is that right? Guageland, okay, so, so uh, we too have challenges with languages. Um, so, <laughs> Guageland, there we go. Okay, over to you, team. Four minutes starting now. Okay, so hello, everyone. We are team Guagelander. So this is our product, Bridge Land, a land for indigenous langu uh, languages. OK, so next page. Uh, so now I'll briefly talk about our design idea. It's, a, it's all about exploring all the endangered languages in the world, how some land leveling up system and rewards. We also use the Sushi AI board. And quiz and findings. Also, we have uh, friend circle sharing. These, these are our main features. So. Uh, his, uh, here are our leveling up system. You can see there are uh, houses on your own land. Okay, so for the, for the business model, 
We have the travel agency and the endangered language project involved in our project, in, in our application. Okay, so the technical model. We, <laughs> we use something wrong with the technical. Uh, uh, for the business model, uh, for the technical details, we have ReactJS, Sushi AI, and uh, AWS DynamoDB. Uh, IBM Switch to Text, HTML5, and CSS3 Progressive Web App, and uh, Node.js. Okay, so uh, looking forward, we uh, have some many features. Okay, so let's come to that. Yeah, here I'm going to show you a deployed version of our production. It's quite cool, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah, on our phone, you can see a panda, yeah. Actually, we designed this logo by ourselves because we, the panda and the endangered language, we hope our app can also help the indigenous language as popular as panda, yeah. So when you log in, you can be directed to a discovery page. So every day we will post some random news and the article about the endangered indi indigenous language and here is like the I love you in some kind of language yeah and uh, we also integrate the sushi AI in our app so let's say hi to the sushi yeah, yeah tell me a joke yeah. and uh, tell me what is a uh, good land Yeah, yeah, we will save the language, yeah. Okay, and uh, we also have an uh, interactive Earth, so you can go explore the Earth to find your interest language. So let's explore the Southeast Asia. And let's go to the Laos. So this is one of the endangered indigenous language from Laos, and you can see the culture and some information about it, yeah. And uh, here is the rewarding system. So you can see your points. So with the point, you can level up. And uh, every time when you level up, we will try to find a sponsor. And uh, you will actually donate like $100 to the local organization. So you can, we can also help to save the language. And uh, here you can see the future house you can have with your reward points. Yeah. It's quite interesting, right? OK. Yeah. <laughs> and here is your profile. <laughs> You can see the organization, like in the future, we are going to put more organizations, organization, right. organization, like we are going to have the partnership with. So right now we only put us, but in the future we, we are going to put more. And in the task, so this is how you're gonna earn your points. We have some quiz about the language. So let's try the quiz. And uh, after you finish the quiz, we will give you the points. And uh, then you can build more house and donate to the local organization. Yeah, that's all about our app. Okay, team. Okay. Time's up. Do you have any question? Uh, yeah. 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 And I'd like to add that we have actually deployed to production. This is not just a local host de development. Any other questions from the judges? Please, we want to test these teams. So uh, for the database, we use the DynamoDB, AWS DynamoDB. It's a NoSQL database. I think this is more flexible for our usage, uh, user data and the article and the language. Yeah, I think it's very good for our progressive web Basically, also you see the uh, our application is actually a website, so we have scalability in mind. So basically, you can extend to different devices, whether it's a mobile device, uh, whether it's an iPhone or Android or anything else. So uh, we're actually reaching out to a wide range of users who will benefit from our app, and the indigenous languages will also benefit from our rewarding system. Okay, thanks for that, team. Kukuland, well done.
Okay, great. Uh, quite a comprehensive and functional demonstration with some interesting technologies at play. I was also curious where all the language data comes from, because of course that needs to be pulled from somewhere and displayed accordingly and also hopefully be accurate. Right, so um, on to the next team that we've got lined up. Is that Vernacular? Vernacular yeah. So Vernacular is up uh, for the judges, Vernacular. And I think we're good to display, is that right? Right. Dan, let's start with the timer, four minutes. Hello, everyone. We are Vernacular. So first of all, what is Vernacular? We are making an application for the people of younger generation to get involved with the indigenous languages of the world. So why the younger generation, why not the older generation, first of all? So the older generation, they know the, uh, uh, the, they know the indigenous, indigenous languages quite a bit. But the thing is, due to the uh, globalization, due to people going out of their local communities, people are uh, going towards English and uh, languages like that to communicate with the foreign world. That is the main reason why these languages are a bit diminishing. So we want to involve the younger people using an application based on Suzy. And that is not just an application, that is also a, a smart speaker based application, that is also a voice application also. So we are making a quiz game out of Suzy that will help us involve more younger people into more uh, local. Yeah. So we have used uh, Suzy AI and Loclat. So we have created a skills uh, to generate a list of suite, a, a suite of games based on the indigenous languages that the user selects. So like, I wanted to play a game in Cree, and we have created a option selection game in Cree. And as soon as the game is finished, the high score is posted to Twitter. This makes a community through the low clack and creates the community and, the, and connects the native speakers to the people who are still learning the uh, indigenous languages. So yeah. Building an application, building community out of it, that's our main aim. That's our main aim through this application. So what is the I mean achievement? We have not just built an application, we have also built a skill that can be, uh, that can be easily used by the native uh, that mobile speaker of Suzy. And even a small child can play this game. This is so easy. We, can, uh, uh, we mostly want to include more, more folklores and everything that uh, people have. Like uh, you remember sitting on your uh, grandparents' lap uh, when you were younger and uh, listening to the folklore they used to say. Suzy is like a family member. You can easily uh, access these things. You can easily learn more about the indigenous languages, for sure. So obviously, main thing, we are making a better community out of it, made a world of, made better world out of it. So that's it from our side. Thank you. Any questions, please? Okay, excellent. So we have created an iOS app with a few web views, and we have used the Loclack API, the Suzy, the chat.suzy.ai app, and the Suzy skills data to create our custom skills. And the games are generated from native HTML5 and canvases and iframes. Another question from the judges? about the gamification, interesting concept. How do uh, right now for the indigenous languages, there's not much open API or open data available. So we had to scrape the data mostly. And we are uh, getting in a database where we are making a different list of words. Uh, that will be used. That that game is based on that uh, like specific word. What is like what is an I in Cree? That specific word it is. So we are making a database out of it. We are making the translations out of it. That's how we are uh, making the database. Okay, we're good. So round of applause. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Team Vernacular. Um, so an interesting take on mobile app. Uh, gamification, like the previous team, making it a bit interactive and using SUSE AI. So it's great to see these projects at off FOSS Asia technology also. Okay, next team is up and ready. We team Manang. Right, over to you. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, we're a team Manang, um, which means uh, friends in Kachin. 
Uh, we're also very lucky to have a Kachin expert join our team. Um, so, next slide. so fundamentally, the problem we're focused on is in these indigenous communities, um, basically the children, they have to learn the national language, which doesn't give them that much time to learn the indigenous languages. So how can the previous generation transmit these reading and writing skills to the next generation? Um, so basically, we want to build a game that can help the kids uh, learn to read and write in the indigenous language. Um, so fundamentally, the most important technical problem is a lack of data. So we don't have a lot of data in, in indigenous languages. So the problem we tackle is how to collect this data. Okay, so here you can see Puji, uh, our expert, actually recording his own voice samples. So we deployed a website where they can record their voice samples in the indigenous language. Okay, so um, the, prob the AI problem uh, we want to tackle is how to train a speech recognizer for the Kachin language. So there are many ASR systems, many languages, but probably none for Kachin, right? Um, so uh, what we want to do is we don't have a lot of data in Kachin, but could we use the English data sets and kind of fine tune for the Kachin language? Um, the solution we came up with is that um, they use different alphabet systems, English and Kachin. But if we translate everything to IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet, then maybe we can transfer some of that data set. Okay, so we actually um, were able to do some training during the hackathon, so we did this on Saturday. So data set's called Timit. It's an open source data set, um, about 6,000 utterances, 400 speakers in English. So the first step, you transcribe it to IPA, uh, then we use PyTorch and some open source to train RNN. And just to show, we actually ran it. It took about two and a half hours on a GPU. So skip ahead. Um, finally, what we would actually do is we would take the uh, Kachin samples and we would try to fine tune a language model and um, you know, use that language model to, to create an ASR in Kachin. So good. Okay, so. Okay, uh, so just briefly about the, how we prepared the data. So uh, first, Firstly, we got our uh, expert, uh, Fuji, uh, who, who, is, uh, who, who speaks Kachin. Uh, and uh, basically, he, he, he gave us a, a, a bunch of words, uh, Kachin words. Um, and we, we first uh, have to try to translate it to uh, uh, a few names in CMU, uh, which is Carnegie Mellon University's uh, uh, phonetics, uh, phonetic alphabet, because uh, that's easier to, to, to type in. And then uh, thereafter, we have a dictionary to, to translate it back to IPA. So as you can see, there are, there are words like Gordin, means football, Manang, which is uh, our team name, it means friends, and uh, Singapore, it's not Singapore, it's, uh, uh, that's, the, that's the right way to, to say it in uh, Kachin. Uh, and there's a uh, Tom Ai, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, then here's a demo. Yep. So the demo is basically to uh, So the uh, game is like, uh, you have to say this word in Kachin. Uh, so assuming that I don't know any Kachin, I just go ahead and then say something. So so it says, sorry, I didn't say anything. So I should try the hint button, it says. So when I try the hint button, it says, you should say Gordon. So Gordon means football, I would say. Then, okay, I say Gordon. Actually, like in the end, it'll pronounce what uh, Fuji had said, but it didn't work out. Sorry. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting topic. Uh, is the code uploaded uh, in GitHub? I think we, we have a GitHub. We can share the link for it. Yes. Further questions to Kachin and uh, 
what was supposed to happen after you say the word so in in the demonstration but what okay would so I, I, I think uh, I think the point is um, if they can pronounce the word in Kachin okay then I give them a point but if they can't they will say okay here's how you pronounce it and they will try to grade their performance on how well they say the word so I can train the speaker yeah so using the AI to grade the, the speaker's performance yes okay. Where's the AI part of it on, on this when you said when you're training it? Okay, so yeah, we trained uh, a model for speech recognition and we still need to fine tune it. So actually, we were able to collect four speech, four different speakers' uh, speech samples, um, two from uh, Myanmar and one in Thailand. But obviously, we'll probably need a little bit more data, a little bit more time to kind of fine tune the model. Any last questions from the judges? Okay, I think the judges are happy. I think our time's up. Thank you, team. Okay. I think we're looking forward to hearing some Kachin. Um, <laughs> always novel to have everybody from different cultures but different backgrounds too. And we can share that in the teams. We have both you know, students, uh, friends, technical people, non-technical people, and even, I guess, family members participate. So. Uh, it's really bringing people together to come to a hackathon and spend 48 hours together turning out a product in a rough prototype. Over to the next team, which, let's make sure I've got information here. Is this team Simru? Here's a mic. Good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to present to you our project, Tazim, which I'd like to go into lengths about why we named this, if time permits at the end. So I'd like to begin by introducing our team members. My name is Anna. My name is Nick. And Lam. Uh, so first, we'd like to talk about the situation at hand. As you all know, the indigenous languages across the world are decreasing rapidly as that's why UNESCO has declared 2019 the year of indigenous people. And so, for example, we have a team member with us, Sue, who's an indigenous, per indigenous person from Myanmar, specifically the western part of Myanmar. And as of now, there are only 1.5 million speakers of her language, which is Arakanese. And this may seem like a large number, but compared to the 360 million speakers of English, this is a drastic difference. So in order to preserve their language, um, languages such as Sioux, we came up with an initiative in order to help fuel and preserve the languages. And that is through our gaming application, which I will hand to my team members, Nick and Lam, to talk more in detail about. So we developed um, the, the idea um, and the problems that um, a lot of our um, competition actually um, faces is that um, when dealing with um, getting data um, for speech, uh, we don't really have a lot of that for indigenous languages. So we get decided to gamify the collection of speech data for the use of other applications. And we did this through adapting um, Flappy Bird and um, being inspired by that um, not connected Chrome dinosaur game they got. Um, so the idea is that um, we have, you have to speak to get the bird to go over obstacles. And the obstacles are different objects that prompt the um, player to say different things in their indigenous language. And we record that and play it back and associate the obstacle, like the image, to what was said. So we'll demonstrate here. So I'll try to turn down the volume a little bit so we don't blast. I'm not sure if this is actually connected to speakers at all, but um, oh yeah. So if 
the idea is that um, you press these um, buttons, on, click on the buttons on the side, and the audio that are recorded um, is actually played back. And then um, in the future, we would extend this so that we would send these audio files to a remote database uh, along with the associated images so that they could be further studied and used for um, machine learning models. Um, and then we would, the idea is that uh, we made this game um, very easy just to expand. You can add in any of your own images and just you just provide the um, path within the um, code and you can just expand it to get whatever images you want and you can apply it to any given language. It makes no assumption on whether or not the language actually has a written component. So in addition to that, that we're saying that our target audience for this app would be the indigenous people and it's a good way to help, I guess, um, take in their curiosity, given a game that uh, can take in their language, record their language, and preserve it for future data sets, for maybe future linguistics or technologists who hope to use this data to f fuel other different issues in the future. And okay. although this game right now seems like you can just, you can just say something forever and then it'll stay up there, we can have obstacles at the very top so then you'll have to not speak and then whisper at some point into it in order to avoid the obstacles. So it gets more complex, but this is our basic rough draft. Okay. Thanks, team. Nice. Over to the judges for one minute of questioning. Technology, what, what are you using? How are you storing now today? Okay, so we did, we ended up not using um, any of the Boss Asia technology, and we were going to try using um, the previously developed Flappy Bird game, and that didn't cooperate very well with the microphone. So we just used um, plain um, JavaScript. Um, we took a couple of open source projects already um, to get the basic game physics. Mario, you have a question. We've got time for one more question if the judges have. Nope. We good? Okay. Tazin, well done. Good presentation. Right, so we continue on. Next team up is called NYJC. I'm curious about the name. Uh, uh. Yes. Hi, good afternoon, judges. So our name is basically NYJC, as you can see. It's the name of our junior college. So we decide to take on its name and hope for good luck. Um, so our project is very simple, and it serves its purpose, I guess. So it's up and running now, so you can access the URL link if you would like to. So yeah, um, it's a very basic uh, web page, that we web app that we use to promote and we raise awareness of indigenous languages. So as you can see, we have a why page which basically show the reasons, the statistics, and what you can learn about the indigenous <laughs> languages. Uh, yes, and as you can see, there's a learn more button because basically we're not experts in the languages ourselves. So uh, we have a learn more button that link to a web page where we deem it's possible for the audiences to get a better overview of the matter. So yeah. Um, okay, so we also have a language map which we painstakingly <laughs> input the uh, data of the indigenous languages. Yes. So yeah. So if you uh, click on the nation or the region on the map, it will show you what kind of languages there are in that area. So yeah, we implemented quite of, but you, as you can see, we have not covered the map, so that's kind of a point of improvement that we can implement in the future. So we have also a what page. So basically the what page is where you can learn. So here you can, um, so it's a demo, so I think I should pass the mic to my friend right here so he can do it for you. Uh, so it's, um, so we use Suzy AI as the base because we think that languages are very dry. We are students, so we have, we have no, experience. 
Yes, we are, have experience with languages. So uh, it's a very dry topic, and we think that if you interact with a chatbot, that's better. So um, basically, we passed some skills to it. So it's uh, not the basic Suzy AI that you find. So we, uh, you know, we added some uh, language skill to it. So So when you ask a question like that, so it will pass back an answer of a language that we've already implemented. So it can translate from Ainu to English. Ainu is a language of uh, indigenous people of the northern part of Japan. Yeah. So it's a uh, uncle in <laughs> Ainu is Akapo, <laughs> as it seems. Yeah. So it, we also implement the random word if you want to know more about the word because we have a word list but apparently no one's going to browse it. So if you want a random word like just for your own suffering, you can uh, actually ask for the random word. Yes. Um. <coughs> oh, we also implement the fun fact. So if you want to know more, uh, like a, maybe a random fact, just some small fact about the indigenous languages, you can get it from CTI also. <laughs> so yes, um, also uh, as you converse with your chatbot, the, sometimes you will like, sometimes your query will contain some like interesting word. You know, time's up. Team, okay, well done. An interesting demonstration of your different language aspects. One minute for the judges. Um, so, thank you, I was um, uh, wondering about the um, uh, the language, uh, how do you implement the language? So as of now, we only have Ainu as our language. So as you can see, we have a language tab there. So we intend to put more, but of course of time constraints, we only have one language as of now. So we can translate from English to Ainu and back. But no. Yes, but how, 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 how is it done? Oh, the, I see. Uh, um, uh, yes. the, the table, the translation. Uh, Basically, the basically the language data is stored in a way. It's a in short, it's a two D array. So you could just basically extend one column to add for another language. So yeah. But the manual thing at, at this point, we're just using it as a key value pair and then just extending it. That's what you say. Okay. Okay, judges. I think that's all the time we have for team and YJC and YJC, <laughs> so thank you. Okay. Yes, there we go. Um, so as we progress through this, we only have three teams left, if they're all here. Um, I'm very encouraged by all the teams that have come up so far. Let's have you come up. And we are Gadong? Yes, we are Gadong. <laughs> OK, Team Gadong, we're going to give you four minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm La from Laos. Uh, actually, we, our team is um, three plus. Uh, I, I will talk, uh, I will share a little bit about um, the reason why we came up this idea. Um, in Laos, we have um, the problem that, for exp uh, especially Kumu people, in the, in the community, they don't uh, speak Laos. So when they go to school, that's a problem that uh, they, it's hard for them to study. And in the same time in the city, uh, Gamu people, they can't speak Gamu. So that's why we um, uh, create the apps. So I will hand out to my friend to talk more about this app. Thank you, Lau. Yeah, so now I want you to meet Noi. She is a Kamu a female, and she gets the opportunity to actually learn English through our app. At the same time, she helps us build the English Kamu dictionary. To your right, you can see Jane. She's a tourist now in Laos, and she finds it difficult to interpret the language. 
So our app is actually going to help her do the same. So let's highlight our problem statement. Inadequacy of online resources for indigenous languages. Gadong. So Gadong is basically a game we have designed to address the inadequacy of these online resources for Kamu, which is an indigenous language. It helps provide translation facilities as well as a dictionary. Now we will have an online a demo. Okay, so I'll do the first part. And the first part is, so we're authenticating with uh, any social media right now, it's Facebook. And now we have two options. One is play a game, or two is uh, look at the lexicon. So if, uh, we're gonna play the game, and you get a word, and you get the picture, and you also get the Lao on the right. And because Kamu doesn't have an official text, they're gonna type in Lao, and so, I have some, just imagine a local was using it. They would type this and play the game. And then it would go one by one. And this is basically to give them incentives, they get points for every question. And there's a leaderboard that they can check where they're on that leaderboard. So the more people play, our objective is being reached, which is uh, getting Kamu words, which is in online right now. And he's gonna talk about the lexicon. Okay, so basically the words that we collect from that game are the ones that we're gonna use to populate a sort of online dictionary. So we're kind of building a dictionary with these words that, that's gonna be open source and people from anywhere can use it. Like, because we see that a lot of other developers and even people at UNESCO who are interested in, you know, working with indigenous languages. And we think this would be a great tool for them. So in addition, we've also implemented a translate feature here. So um, the words that we collected to build the database can also be used to translate by tourists or other people wanting to talk to people in Kamu. Like, for example, if I put in a word. So it gives me the Kamu translation for that. So technically, if you go to Google Translate, you can't find this, because all you can do is English to Lao, Lao to English. This is giving you English to Kamu. And so it's, we got this idea basically because we were speaking to Lao and she said, that her indigenous language doesn't have an official script. And this is supposed to be a fun way that you gather data that doesn't exist. And the dictionary is supposed to build and grow. And and yes, and uh, because of children, they, they, they can guess by pictures. So that's why we came up with this idea that we have uh, pictures and easy for children to understand too. And again, I want to talk more about Kadong. <laughs> why, why this app mean Kadong, or call Kadong? Because Kadong, in Kamu, uh, it, Kadong is Kamu uh, language that um, we, uh, that's very popular for Kamu. <laughs> You, you can see every uh, year we have a Kamu um, New Year. So people share story and song around the Kadong. <laughs> that's very fun. So that r really represent to Kamu. So that's why it's Kadong. <laughs> well done, team. Okay. <laughs> Nicely presented. Okay. We've got one minute for the... We're actually using an online MongoDB storage and we're putting it there for now. Mm -hmm. do, do you have any more questions? This is a progressive web app. So it's supposed to be a website that functions like an app. And we're just showing it here on the website also that it's cross-platform and built in React using Workbox. Mm -hmm. And uh, where are you getting the English word from which to translate from? Okay, so essentially we um, kind of used the random word generator which gave us a lot of words and then we actually put it through Python doing parts of speech tagging to get like words we thought would be useful to translate. And then we used that list to get the images and so on. Open source packaging. Okay, great team, well done. <laughs> team Gadong. Okay, so for K Team Gadong and some really indigenous languages, uh, well put together with a small team to make it so functional and, and demonstratable. I think also important is the consideration for web technologies, right, and mobile technology in the context of these emerging markets, right? Mobile first, making these things mobile accessible. The team that we're going to bring up now is uh, a speaker from earlier from Simru. So judges, just to make a note, we're going to Simru.
from earlier, and you get four minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, first of all, this is not pronounced Simru. Uh, it's Welsh, and it's pronounced as Kamri. Uh, yes, Kamri. Weird, isn't it? Now, let's talk about Welsh. Well, Welsh is, according to the UNESCO languages, that is um, yeah, kind of endangered, is uh, vulnerable. So it could go in danger, but it could also not go in danger. But yeah, so it is kind of going out of trend, you know. So Welsh is a very interesting language. So I have, I have a solution for um, the promotion of Welsh language to make sure it does not go extinct. Uh, I got a, uh, yeah, and that's uh, Simru M. Uh, Biff. It's pronounced like that. It means uh, live long Welsh, uh, Wales. It's a, a national kind of thing for Wales. <laughs> so my game is uh, Simru. It's a Welsh English soup of uh, many beauty. And uh, yeah, it's, it's made of unity. It's a game, mate. So uh, I'm going to present my, my project. It's going to promote uh, indigenous languages. So uh, yeah, meet uh, Simru. It's just, you know, this kind of game anyone can make, you know? Just play around. So I want to play. So uh, yeah, if, if you're a kid, it's like, okay, man, I'm gonna use my arrow keys to move. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go left. This ball is Wales. You know, you can, you can kind of get the picture. No need words much. Okay, so so yeah, the ball. Now it's Wales on top of it, and and the kid, you know, he just looks at this and it's like, okay, I, I need to go to the sim rule. Yeah, I don't know why. You know, just go there. And, and yeah, and and, and and yeah, long live Wales. It's like, wait, where do I go now? Yeah, I, I got these two floating over me. And oh, I see uh, two words. And beef. Long live Wales. That's, that's I infer, yeah. And, and I have a boss battle, yeah. Go Wales. Simru and beef. UK. Damn imperialists. Ouch. <laughs> And Wales will defeat the UK. Yeah. One bullet, it dies. UK, Wales wins. Simru and Beef, the end. Promotion of Wales. Now, now why would this uh, promote the Welsh language? Because it, it's, it's, you know, jokes. Jokes, people get it, you know? Like words. It's very easy to remember. It's funny. It's memorable. You don't need to teach them an entire language to remember some language. Hmm? You teach them words, like words that you gotta start by word by word. So a uh, game as a medium is like the best way to teach like people languages. I mean, it's memorable. I mean, I mean, you all, I mean, English speakers, you just pronounce this as Simru, but you know, now, you know, it's a, uh, what is it again? Uh, <laughs> Kamri, yeah, Kamri and Biff, not bra. So the end, uh, I end my presentation now. Do you have other people in a team or is it just you doing yeah, this? Yeah, just me only. Wow. <laughs> so how did you build the game, so? Well, um, this is made with uh, Unity. Uh, Unity Engine It's like, uh, many people use Unity Engine because number one, it's free, so anyone can do it. Anyone can like make a game on it. So like, yeah, I mean, people, you got a statement to make, got a, something to promote, whatever, you just, you know, use whatever engine you want, promote your statements. So you want to promote your language, just, I don't know, make, make something funny, you know, make something memorable. So yeah, it's, uh, anyone can do it. E even me, uh, mm -hmm. a guy is really lazy. I mean, this kind of graphics, right? This ain't triple A. This ain't something someone would pay sixty dollars for. Uh, why did you pick Wales? Um, cause I read many political comics, and and Wales is like portrayed very hilariously. Like, like Wales is like you know, like the guard dog of the British, like. The cheetah is like an attack dog, according to like some of the comics, and like yeah, it's kind of hilarious. Yeah, yeah, its behavior. Uh, if I if I say any further, uh, I might get in trouble. So so yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so thank you so much, <laughs> Kaimo, <laughs> for uh, entertaining. So uh, something more different and I guess experimental, but making use of the Unity framework for this rapid R&D and uh, demonstration. So um, we're down to the last, I think it's the last team, um, Indy Genolopy. Uh, I just want to ask, is the, is the last team growing tourism here? Are they in the audience? You are, which team are you? You're Indigenopoly. Right, okay, so this will be the last team for today. Give it to them. deck up here. Oh. No, nope. so we're just going to switch laptops, make sure that comes up. Okay, team. Um, I think for the sake of time and making sure you get your four minutes, okay. let's start. Um, all right, so I hope that comes up at some point of time. If not, that's fine. All right, um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kritika, Adrian, Anjali, Sophia. Uh, we've been working on this project together over the last three days. Oh, well, so um, as you can see, we are a mixed race family. My husband comes from Romania and my kids grew up with a strong sense of culture from both sides of the world. And when we were trying to teach our kids Romanian, we noticed something very interesting. We noticed that there, were, there was a very high overlap between um, the words in Romanian and the words in many of the Indian languages. For example, in Romanian there is a word called dushman and the Indians over here would know that the word dushman means enemy in Hindi. In the same way, there is a word in um, Romanian called Prieten, and Prieten means friend. And the root word for that is Priya, which means somebody whom I love or a loved one. And we were wondering what actually happened here. Why is there such a similarity between the two languages? And in fact, there are 300 words in the Romanian vocabulary that come from Indian languages. And we found out that this is actually because of the Roma people. Next slide, please. So the Roma people are basically gypsies, and they traveled from India, and they are now living in many parts of Europe. They have a culture, they're an indigenous group of people, and, um, and they are responsible for some of the similarities between the languages that my husband and I share, and which is, um, which is important to the roots of our kids. However, we all know that the gypsy people, because of the gypsy-like lifestyle, they are persecuted. So, next slide, please. Okay, so this is what we have done to help. So we made a Monopoly-based game, which has many different tiles. And each of these tiles have a light sensor, so you can detect which, which player is on which tile. So there's an Arduino over here, which controls all those light sensors. This information is passed to the app, and now, okay, so this is the app. It's part one. There are two parts for this. And we are going to chat with Susie. We'll just click that button. And we can't. So, um, yeah, the thingy was sometimes Susie wasn't really behaving with us. We were asking it whether it could tell us more about Romani, which is what this feature of the app is mainly used for. The second part of the app would be the game board. So, um, keep going. And in the game board, as my sister said, players move along and it's connected to the web server. So when these pieces, they allow different amounts of light to pass through so the light sensors can detect them. When they're moved over, it'll give different numbers to the web server, which this app will then take. 
So for example, if a person lands on a forest tile, they'll be able to buy it. And for this, they'll have to use points. And these points come from the learning portion of this game, where if they land on the learn tile, they'll be asked a question. And if they answer that question correctly, they'll be able to get 100 points. This is the technology we have used. We've used Tunkable for the app, Python for the backend and the flow control, Arduino for the game board and all the messy stuff back here, SUSE AI for the chatbot for the users to learn more, and Python Anywhere for the web server. OK, uh, this is a very short implementation what we have done in two days. We can extend it by adding a lot more information. Um, personalized uh, SUSE AI skills and implementing a rich text format that can allow people from very different backgrounds to contribute uh, with information based on their own uh, indigenous languages. Children do not have ingrained prejudices, therefore we have made this a game to expose them to different cultures early on in their life so that they can create a cultural bridge. Okay, thank you. Well done, and we're also good for time. So one more minute for the questions. Judges, any questions to mon Monopoly? No questions, but I applaud the kids for getting involved. <laughs> Okay, any last uh, one more from uh, Davide? Yeah, unfortunately we haven't seen uh, <laughs> much of the demo, so, so it uh, actually works. Then pass the microphone. So let's see if we can just play the audio for that. Uh, um. See if we can bring up this video. Just gonna let the audio out. So we think the audio of this is going into the HDMI. So yeah, this is the first part of the video. Again, with Susi AI. My mom is asking it a few questions, but um, I think the volume is dead on this laptop. It doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. I think we're up for time, so team, thank you for, uh, for trying and really putting this together. <laughs> right, it's so very interesting to learn about the, the spread of languages and going from, from the subcontinent of India and finding words that end up in a different part of the world. And I think that all speaks towards this, uh, this initiative of UNESCO to, to give some attention to these indigenous languages. So uh, where we are at now is uh, at a very important juncture of this afternoon where we're going to be collecting uh, feedback from the audience about your popular audience vote and we will let the judges adjourn um, for their votes. Just to take you briefly through it, um, there will be five different prizes and we'll recap that in a minute. Um, I'd like you to please to navigate to this website and cast your votes and the judges I'll let the judges adjourn first um, and withdraw for their consultation. In the meantime, for the rest of the audience, we have some snacks outside, um, so we can have a quick break. And we look to uh, regroup here shortly. So we're slightly over time, but let's make it in 10 minutes and try to be back here just, just shortly after 5 p.m. <laughs>